Hello there, my fellow megalomaniac necromancers, and welcome back to another episode on the lore of Warhammer Fantasy. Today, once again, we are gonna delve back into the military of the undead vampire counts of Sylvania and beyond. Now, we already covered quite a lot of units of this faction, having started with the lowly zombies and the skeletons, and in the most recent episode, I believe, with giant monsters like the Vargulf and the Terrorgeist. Today, we're gonna take a more mechanical approach, so to speak, as we cover some rather bizarre war machines and engines of the undead. Unlike stuff like cannons and rocket launchers, the undead use these things more for boosting dark magic than actual direct damage. But you're gonna see all that in a moment. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Corpse Cart Sometimes a corpse cart is hung with a great bell, the clapper of which is a fell lodestone of eldritch provenance. When necromantic magic is thick in the air, the bell tolls, and ripples of dark magic emanate from the corpse cart. Under the influence of its ominous knell, the dead are drawn back together and cadavers stagger back on their feet. Other corpse carts are lit by braziers that burn with supernatural fire. The smoke from these bale fires contains particles of warpstone with the ability to drive enemy wizards temporarily insane. The first corpse carts came about during the year 1111 IC when the Chaos Moon Morslieb showered down great chunks of warpstone meteorites upon the lands of Sylvania. The citizens of that benighted province during that time were racked by the horrors of the Black Plague. This was a powerful disease unleashed by the vermin of the Skaven Under Empire, in an effort to weaken the Empire of Man before their inevitable invasion. When fragments of warpstone were scattered across Sylvania, the bodies of those victims became imbued with large amounts of dark magic. The warpstone meteors would in time also affect the plague wagons that carried thousands of the dead plague victims to the charnel pits. Bodies fused together into writhing undead masses, and the drivers of the carts transformed into strange, withered creatures. The infamous necromancer, Frederick Van Hall, formed an army of the undead from the newly risen, using his dark magic to bind the corpse cards to his will. Infused by warpstone and driven forth by Van Hall's will, the corpse cards acted as a conduit for the necromancer's own magic. When Van Hall's apprentice turned on the master and killed him eventually, the corpse cards were no longer controlled. Without Van Hall's guiding influence, the devilish devices dispersed to all corners of Sylvania. Though most of them were hunted down and put to the torch, for over 1,000 years, the remaining corpse gods have wandered along the back roads and dirt tracks of Sylvania, carrying death and misery with them like a shroud. On the darkest of nights, they enter ramshackle villages, stirring the dead in their graves and filling the dreams of slumbering peasants with visions of rot and death. These strange constructs are highly valued by all vampires. The reason? Undead creatures near a corpse card will be imbued with large amounts of dark magic, giving those undead the ability to fight with doubled vigor and savagery. The Black Coaches Driven forward by a pair of nightmares and a scythe-wielding wraith, these coaches serve as a way of transporting a vampire anywhere he or she wishes, protecting him or her from the baleful sun and plowing through a position that would dare stand in the way. These morbid carriages are omens of disaster and death. They are horrific, unholy things, neither wholly real nor immaterial. A black coach is a herald of famine, war and murder, the sight of which can drive a sane man to suicide and cause families to fall upon themselves. The nightmares themselves are the undead destrier mounts used by the vampire counts of Sylvania. Unlike most other mounts, the nightmare is not a creature of mortal flesh and blood. The steeds of the vampires are unnatural destriers. Some nightmares are the carcasses of a dead warhorse, brought back to life through necromancy. Though their flesh is withered and their skin pocked and rank, these mighty steeds are infused with dark magic, 
and they can easily bite or kick a man to death. Other nightmares are sorcerous constructs of sinew, bone and metal, all empowered by magic. The most impressive nightmares are those born out of defiled flesh and bone, reared on fresh blood until they can stand tall and proud. Their shadowy flanks shimmer with magical power, and their eyes glow like hot coals, and their hooves burn with a coruscating magical fire. Smoke snorts from a nightmare's flaring nostrils, carrying the stench of brimstone and decay. These creatures are often clad in heavy barding or wear rusting chainmail, spiky bits on their bodies to tear at the flesh of the enemy. Some nightmares, known as hell steeds, have been known to soar across the moonlighted sky with wings of leather and bone. The black coaches serve as the principal transportation for vampires to cross large tracts of land without having to face the baleful rays of the sun. They also serve to transport the remains of vampires into places of slaughter, for a vampire can never truly die and can still be resurrected should all the remains be placed in a casket and sent to places saturated by dark magic. By creating a black coach, the vampire's retainers can transport their master's rejuvenating form to places of great slaughter. This allows the vampire to revivify himself or herself, drinking in the coalescing energy that swirl around the crucible of war. Every black coach is a magnet for such baleful forces. As it drives onward, it soaks in the energy of the battlefield, shimmering with sorcerous power until it is all but unstoppable. Driven on by the undying will of the vampire couched inside it, the black coach crushes or scythes down the ranks of the enemy that are foolish enough to stand in its way. The Coven Throne Compensating for a cursed existence with grandeur and luxury is a common theme among the vampire elite. A true lord or lady of undeath refuses to churn through the mud of a battlefield like a common peasant or be content with the dubious dignity of riding a grave monster. Instead, the monarchs of the night are often born to war on gilded palanquins known as coven thrones. These bone-framed constructs are held aloft by the departed spirits of those who have fallen in love with their owners and got nothing in return but a violent death. Mortal men shiver in awestruck disbelief at the exotic beauty of the handmaidens lounging upon these coven thrones, hypnotized by a beguiling glance, a kiss upon the air, or a subtle finger beckoning them into eternal servitude. The legend of the vampires originates in the desert realm of Lamia, and it is the Lamians who are famous above all for their use of coven thrones. Those hailing from that land consider themselves the first among the aristocracy of the night, for their darkling city was the first ever to bear the curse of vampirism. All the Lamians descend from Neferata, the queen of mysteries, who is said to despise men with a passion. Consequently, very few Lamians are male. Instead, the most enchantingly beautiful maidens are chosen from among the noble families of Bretonia and the Empire, and then granted the blood kiss. They then gain control of the humans around them with cunning and intrigue, for the Lamians do take an active interest in the affairs of humanity. No one knows how many eccentric noble women, widows or highborn ladies, are in actuality members of the undead. The Lamians are hedonistic, self-indulgent creatures that take great pains to present themselves in splendor and majesty at all times. Thus, the coven thrones carrying the Lamian sisterhood are bedecked with rare artifacts and strewn with silk-embroidered cushions and other finery. Over the centuries, the Lamians have become skilled in the arts of foretelling and prescience in order to stay one step ahead of the agents who pursue them. The coven thrones bear great enchanted bowls full of fresh virgin blood, within which the vampire's handmaidens can scry the future. What the Lamian's final purpose is, however, no one can fathom. Despite their luxury, these ostentatious palanquins are potent weapons upon the battlefield. The vampires themselves move so swiftly as to be virtually invisible to the human eye, but their true power lies in their unity. A coven of vampires fighting as one is as formidable an enemy as any dragon or even demon lord. The Mortis Engine 
The Mortis Engine is a horrific magical artifact radiating strongly with dark magic and is kept afloat by a horde of vengeful spirits. Within the Mortis Engine are powerful relics saturated with strong amounts of dark magic, such as the remains of powerful necromancers and mighty lich lords of ancient days. The Mortis Engines are almost always watched over by deathless attendants known as Corpse Masters, trusted servants of the Vampire Counts whom have proven immune to the dire energy that emanates from the relics inside. When the Corpse Master removes the locks and opens the lead-lined reliquary, the deadly artifact inside can be held aloft, leeching the life energy of the enemy and invigorating any nearby undead creatures. The longer a battle rages, the more energy the relic absorbs, and the more powerful it becomes. Mortis engines can be typically found where the fighting is thickest, ominously drifting into bloody battle lines. Such positions simultaneously fuel the engine with the energy of the dying and allows the engine to support the undead forces where the fighting is thickest. However, so redolent with dark magic are these artifacts that opening the reliquary is not without risk, for its power can sometimes tear apart the engine itself. Indeed, if such a relic is ever shattered upon the field of battle, the subsequent release of pure evil has been known to smite anything and everything in the vicinity, including the undead, in an explosive wave of dark magic. Some reliquaries also carry blasphemous tomes to battle, or scrolls of parchment rumored to have been penned by Nagash himself. Often the winds of magic become nigh uncontrollable when such a tome is near. Heavy with evil magic, these tomes are painstakingly illuminated with such effort that often the very souls of their creators are inked upon the parchments of human skin. In battle, these books can be a boon to the twisted practitioners of necromancy, but also the bane of reckless or inexperienced spellcasters who would dare to risk relying upon such diabolical relics. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these strange devices and war machines of the undead. Maybe not as cool and destructive as the Hellblaster cannon, for example, but I still find them interesting. If nothing else, they are at least more original in their use and purpose than most of the other siege engines. Are you a fan of any of these units? Which one did you find most interesting or useful upon the battlefield? Let us all know what you think in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a peaceful Sunday. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.